how to make an intro for your track using the media tracker. Open up the media tracker by clicking on the icon in the bottom right. Under intro, click on edit. Add a track for the path camera by clicking the plus and then path camera. And you can position this anywhere you want by selecting the first key, which is highlighted by this white bar and adjusting the camera using the arrow keys and also moving where the camera is looking by holding right click and moving the mouse around. Adjust it to anywhere you want. I usually like to do something near the start of my track. And then you can do this same for the second key. And basically how it works is the path will travel from the first key to the second key. The next key, you can see it's in that original position. So if we want it to be closer to where our start was, we can select the start, do control C, select the second key, do control V, and that will copy and paste the actual position of our camera. Then we can move it slightly. And now that we've moved it, the camera will travel between those two points. So the easiest way you can build an intro is to basically add a bunch of three second segments of path cameras and string together a little intro of different parts of your track. So if you're gonna add another path camera, click the plus again, click on path camera, and then you can position it by click, uh, click and dragging it along the timeline. You can also click on a key, hold shift, and click on another key, and that will line those up perfectly. If you click on the last key, you can also type in the time that you want it to be at at the end. So this one will have it end at six seconds. So this uh, track is going from three to six seconds. The first track is going from zero to three seconds. So you can continue adding path cameras and make a little intro video. So in this example, we're not going to actually use the second path camera. So we're gonna click on that and click the X to delete the selected track. Uh, but we actually, what we want in our second scene is to actually watch a car driving on our track. And so for that, we're gonna have to record a ghost. There are two ways to record a ghost. The first way is to click this record a ghost icon and place the car anywhere on the track. I'll just place it on the grass here for an example, drive for a bit, and then you can press escape or start and say use this ghost and hit yes. And that will import a ghost into the track. I'm gonna go ahead and click the X and delete that and show you the other way to record a ghost, which is by going back and going to validate your track with the validate icon in the bottom right. You'll see that every time we validate the track, our intro will play. So now we just drive the track and record a replay. And you can drive it as many times as you want to get a good run. And you can even just import the run from your author time that you drove if you save the replay. So after you drive your track, you have an option at the end to save replay. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we'll go back to the media tracker, edit the intro and click on the ghost icon at the bottom in the middle and go to my replays and then scroll over, go find the replay. It should have the start with the name of your track and then have the timestamp in it and it shows the time as well. And click on open, that imports the ghost into our track. So this ghost is actually overlapping with the path camera. So if we don't want that to happen, we can click on this where it starts and hold shift and click on the next one to line it up. And so our ghost won't actually show when we do the, our first scene, but it will appear in the second scene. Now we need to add a camera to follow our ghost around the track. So under tracks, click the plus, and there are two options for this. We can either use the player camera or the custom camera. So I'll just demonstrate the player camera first, and then we'll do this custom camera. So again, let's line this up and we're just going to drag this. So we have some extra time for the player camera, select the um, target so it should have whatever your username is so it'll say one Matt DTO is this ghost and if you click on this ghost it'll have that ghost name as well and then we can select the camera type so if you want it to be like cam 3 or cam 2 you can select which one you want so we'll go ahead and select external which is cam 2 and you'll see that this ghost is not actually moving so that's a bug with the media tracker so sometimes the ghost you can actually watch it play while you're in this editor and sometimes you can't. So in this case, since we can't, we'll just hit back and go to validate our track and we'll just watch our intro here. So you'll see in the first scene, there's no car. And then in the second scene, we can actually see the car driving along our track. So this looks like a player is driving the car, but I think we can do something much like a much cooler camera angle since 
we don't actually need to see where we're going. So to do that, we'll delete the player camera and we'll use the custom camera. Adjust the custom camera. So instead of zero to three seconds, it's gonna go from three to six seconds. So click the uh, anywhere on the custom camera. Let's change the end to a six and we'll change the start to a three. So we'll set it up so the camera is following a path, but also targeting the car as it drives. And so the target we're going to change to Matt DTO, so the name of our ghost. And if you can't edit it, make sure that key is selected. And from there, you'll see that anywhere we move the camera, or if we use the arrow keys to move in and out, it's gonna show where our ghost is. And right now our ghost is at the starting line um, because there's like a bug in the media tracker where it doesn't always play, have, play the ghost. Um, but since we had, there's like two ways to move this where um, the ghost, where if we had, you can either drag and move it or you can drag and move the, uh, like the key. And so since we moved the key, it didn't change the offset of the ghost. So it's like the ghost is still starting at zero seconds, but we're not seeing it until three seconds in. So anyway, with the custom camera, now we're going to be targeting at our ghost and wherever we are is where the camera is going to sit. So we're actually going to have it sit over here and maybe we can have it sit like right here. And then we'll copy paste that to um, the second point, but we're going to have it sit a little, a little further away. So that way our camera will actually move while, um, it's targeting this ghost. And so now we're just gonna go watch it. Um, so hopefully you can, can see what, what we mean. So the first scene, we don't have the car moving. And the second scene, we're actually targeting it and our camera's following our car. So in the third scene, we're gonna add another custom camera, but we're going to anchor it to the car so it travels alongside the car. So click the plus, click on custom camera, and then we're gonna set this one from nine to, from six to nine seconds. Select the first key and change the target to your ghost name and change the anchor to your ghost name as well and select this anchor rotation. And so what this is gonna do, and for some reason now my, my ghost is actually driving, uh, this will actually make our car, or our camera travel along with the car, but it will keep the angle that we have. So like, let's say for example, we have this first key, we're gonna have it angled above and then we'll copy paste this to the second key. And from the second key, we're gonna angle it kind of down a bit. And so this camera is actually gonna move with the car. And you could even have it like rotate around, like maybe it's on this side and then we're going over to this side as it drives. It can also be cool to just keep it in one place so that the, the car is moving, but the camera is kind of staying still and you just see the track flying by. I'm going to add one more scene so we can see the car actually go through the finish. So I positioned the camera over here and we're going to add a, another custom camera and we'll set this one from 9 to 12 seconds. And this one, we'll, we'll just do the same thing. We'll anchor, anchor it on the car or target the car we won't have an anchor, and so it's just going to follow the car and watch it go through the finish. And then we're going to have our ghost end at the exact same time as that camera. Let's actually add one more path camera so we can have at the end of our track, just to kind of show the overview again. And we'll just go here. Uh, we'll set it from 12 to 15 seconds. Actually, we'll just do 12 to 20 seconds. So it'll essentially be like whatever time is left for the intro and we'll, we'll copy paste that. Um, so we'll, and then we'll just zoom out a tiny bit. So we'll just have kind of like a slow zoom out. The next thing we want to add is a transition between each of our scenes. So right now it's a, like a hard cut. So by adding transition, it makes it a lot more fun to watch. So click on the plus and we can click on fading transition and the fading transition will just show it at the beginning. So if we, put it at the very beginning, uh, it'll essentially fade into our track. And we'll, um, we'll copy paste this. And you can actually have multiple tracks at, at different spots kind of on the same track here. So this one side is dark, this side is light. We are, we're actually gonna want to um, kind of reverse that. So we want it to start so we can see it. And then in the middle, when we line up with 
our scene cut. If we press a K here, we can add a key and we'll make that totally black. So it's gonna fade to black and then it's gonna fade in again. And you can change, play around with like how long you want the duration of the fade to be. So it's essentially gonna fade in, then we'll fade out and then we'll fade into the next scene. And you can do this same type of transition between every scene. And one thing you probably notice is the colors here. So if we copy paste this one, we could make this middle one a different color. So maybe we fade, since our track is kind of red, we could fade, fade to red and back. For the next transition, we're going to combine this fading transition with a blurry effect. So we're gonna copy and paste this and we'll make it white this time. And then we're gonna click the plus and click on depth of field. And we're gonna move this to kind of the same point. And we're gonna actually add two keys in the middle of this by pressing K. And the first key, while we're looking at this card, essentially the depth of field gives you that blurry effect that you see in a lot of intros for track of the day tracks. So we'll, you can change the focus distance and the length size. And this is gonna give you something um, like really blurry. And so the idea is that we're gonna, the car is gonna get blurry, we're gonna fade out to white, and then here we want it to start blurry again. So we'll select this key, you can the one that's highlighted, and we'll make this like super blurry, and then it's gonna kind of fade back in. Let's add another transition. We'll, we'll just copy paste the black one and we'll have that between our last two scenes. So it'll fade to black again and then show our entire track. Let's add the name of our track here at the end as well. So click the plus and select text and we can adjust this one as well. So when we display our entire track, um, maybe we wanna have that, that text there as well. So we'll say, we'll just put the name of the track which is called Dirt Start. And you can position this text as well using these positions. So um, one, I think, let's see, 0.5 is over here. So we want it at the top middle. So we want this to be zero. The second one to be, um, I think the, if the second is one, then that'll be at the very top. So maybe we'll do like 0 0.7, 0 0.75. Um, yeah, right here. So now it just says dirt start kind of at the top middle. And we can select how long that goes for as well. So we'll just have it go for the duration of the track. And you can have you can see that how the, the text kind of moved here. So you actually um, need to you can copy and paste this as well. So it's going to save the position of the text. So if you just want it in one place on the screen, then um, you'll want to copy and paste it and make sure they have the same position. So the next thing we want to do, since dirt start, depending on the scenery, this could be hard to read. We want to add a little box around this. And to do this, we use the 2D triangles. So click plus and then select 2D triangles. And this essentially lets you draw any 2D shape on the screen. And so to start, we'll just click and click again, and then we'll click in this corner and that made a triangle. And so to make a box, we can click on this first uh, corner, click up here, and then click here for to make a box. So we made a box around dirt start. It, might be a little janky, so we want to have the, that be like perfectly rectangular, perfectly square. So we can click on edit mode twice to go to edit vertex and then select the vertex that you want to edit. Uh, we can see this one's at like point, so we'll just say 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.8. And then this one will say, uh, which sometimes you have to click away before you can click on the next one. Um, we'll do the same thing here. We'll have it 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.7. So if you remember our text was at 0. 0.75, so that would be directly centered in the middle of this. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing here, 2.5 and then 0. 0.15 and then 0. 0.8. And we'll do it for the very last one. So this can be a very tedious process if you have to draw a lot of triangles or a lot of rectangles or whatever you want on the screen. But and then the other thing you can do, of course, um, so you can't see our text. So what we need to do is go back to our text and select this uh, first icon and set the position to 0.1. So this is the Z position. So lower means it's going to be higher up on the screen. 
and then we'll go back to our 2D triangles and select our triangle and go back and edit the vertex. And this one's at zero. So we actually, let's set this one at like 0.5 and we're gonna have to do that. Um, we just have to edit that in one place. So then we'll copy and paste this to the second part. So now we have a little box around it. Um, maybe our box is kind of small, but we'll just go with that for now. We're also gonna change the color of our box. So instead of making it gray, let's make it black. So we'll go back to edit vertex and we'll just make it black. And so you actually have to edit each one because um, it supports gradients as well. So if you want to have like pink on one side and purple on the other side, you can do things like that. But we'll just make it plain black. And we also need to set it from, let's say 12 to 20. But one of the really cool things you can do with, um, with these is actually animate them as well. And so we're gonna go ahead and add a key maybe at uh, 13 seconds by hitting K, clicking on this and hitting K. And we're gonna, this is gonna have the same um, spot as this one. But now when we go to the first one, we're going to edit these, looks like we got if you have an extra, you can go to delete and click on delete vertex. We're gonna go edit these and we're gonna make the uh, X position zero. So it's gonna start kind of like totally empty. And so it, it's essentially gonna expand like that. So we can expand it and then once it expands, we can have the text fade in. And so we'll go back up to our text and change the starting key to start at 13 seconds. And then we're going to add a key around 14 seconds by moving our cursor here, typing K. So at 14 seconds, we'll have the full opacity, but at zero seconds, we're gonna shrink that down. So now the text is gonna fade in. One more thing that's worth mentioning about the 2D triangles is you can have them go behind boxes. So we can make a red box around this one that, that zooms in the same way the black box did. You could have the whole screen do different types of animation, like stripes going across the screen or having like a garage door opening and just having like a black box that shrinks up across the screen. So you can do a lot of things with it, but it, it is very tedious to position. So one more thing we probably want to add are some car trails. And so in our last camera path, when our second to last one, when we watched our car drive into the finish, it'd be really nice to have some car trails there. So if we go to our ghost, we can select the color of the car trail. So you have to click on each key. We'll set this one to a uh, light blue. You have to select both the starting key and the ending key for the ghost. And then we'll click the plus and click on car trails. And then this is basically the time period in which car trails are enabled. So we'll set this from nine seconds to 12 seconds to match up with um, that scene. So now we'll, when we're here, we'll see those blue car trails. Another special effect you can play around with is the color grading. So we'll hit the plus and click on color grading and we'll just put it uh, near the end. So if anyone's watching the intro to the very end, you know, they'll get a little teaser there, but the um, it basically you can select the color grade, and there's like black and white or fantasy. Like there, you can play around with it. Um, we'll just select the the black and white for example, and so essentially it'll start at the current grade, fade to black and white, and then fade back to the current grade. And so this kind of like default, and you can change each key if you want to, but the def that's what the default setup is. So if you just select the whole block, um, you can select like the intensity and, and all that as well. The last thing we need to do for our intro is export it so we can upload it as part of the YouTube video. So click on this AVI button and just select whatever presets you want, click OK. <laughs> Was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a